the Irish Football Fan TV's uh, first episode of our film club here with myself, Jack McGuire and Keen McGrath. Today we'll be reviewing the 2015 Nottingham Forest documentary, uh, I Believe in Miracles, and that documents Nottingham Forest's successful domestic campaigns and their run to Europe as well. Yeah, so the 2015 documentary was released on the 13th of October, um, and it was made in conjunction with Nottingham Forest, directed by Johnny Owen. And um, it stars a lot of the players at the time, obviously Clough and Taylor, who um, were manager and assistant manager, couldn't contribute to that because they passed away at the time. But yeah, like Jack said, it covers, uh, I suppose, in-depth the 1979 season, but also the lead-up to it and uh, the following season in a quick, short uh, montage. But I suppose... For people who might know Brian Clough, he was a hugely successful manager with Derby County. Uh, he went then went to Leeds United after a, a short spell at, at Brighton. Uh, was sacked less than 100 days into the job at Leeds, who were at the time the biggest club in the country. Uh, and was kind of left in a bit of disarray afterwards. People weren't sure where he'd go or um, what he'd do. And he took over a, um unfashionable Nottingham Forest club and took them to the from the first division to the top of... Sorry, my phone's going off. It's from the first division at the time up to the sorry, second division time up to the top of the first division, winning the league title before taking him into Europe, as Jack said. And that is where the documentary kind of really kicks off is the the start of the 1978-79 season. So Jack, what, what did you make of it really, I suppose? Was is the first I think foremost. It was incredibly inspirational, you know. From the very first cut, we see uh, there was a vote of no confidence in Clough at Leeds. And uh, like you say, there was uncertainty. It wasn't sure where he'd go or what he'd make of this. And uh, when he came into the job, you know, it was like he just took off. He was made for that Nottingham Forest team, you know, from a man who was kind of people had lost their faith in him after his job at Leeds. But mm -hmm. he certainly regained all those fans at Nottingham. And, you know, he built a team that he desired. You know, he knew the players that he wanted. He knew who'd fit into his system. And he was dedicated to that. And obviously it showed him the results and stuff, you know. It was inspirational to see how he built it, you know, from nothing. And, you know, it just developed from there, really. What did you think? Yeah, I, I, I think it was fantastic. Obviously, a lot of, I won't say massive names, but names you'd recognise in football. Um, Peter Shilton, probably the biggest name for me. Uh, Trevor Francis as well, who had a short career in management. Um, Martin O'Neill, of course, former Ireland manager. But, um, yeah, it was, like I said, I think it shows really, Clough is one of these figures that you always hear about. You know, I think Roy Keane has cited him as the best manager he ever worked under, ahead of Alex Ferguson. O'Neill said that he's he's hugely successful. Uh, he was that he was hugely successful and hugely inspirational for him, and I think you can see that in the managerial um, times that O'Neill had, you know, in his style. But like you said, yeah, Clough was, I suppose, again to go back into it, he he'd won the the first division with um, Derby. He'd been let go from Derby after a falling out with the board, and I don't think the Derby fans ever really forgave that board for the mistake that they, some would say, they made. Yeah. And uh, like I said, when he went to Leeds, he went without his assistant manager Peter Taylor, who would have been. A huge part of everything i think they said clough was the manager but taylor was the brains you know he was the man who'd bring in the talent and he was essentially like a, a scout and assistant manager and he was a huge part of the operation the vote of no confidence at leeds was kind of led by i suppose irish legend johnny giles at the time who would have been loyal to previous manager don revy um and it really the documentary like starts with him really at rock bottom to an extent as rock bottom as you can be with with brian clough you know he was a such a confident man and it's something that you can see a lot more now, you know, Guardiola, Klopp, these managerial personalities. But I think back then, especially in the English game, there was a lot more of a proper English, you know, gentleman almost aspect to managers, whereas Clough really broke the mould. And I suppose was a trendsetter to an extent in that that's what managers are now, or at least most successful yeah. high-profile managers do have a personality and almost like a um, an aura to them of success, you know, that when Clough came in, I think... Um, I think O'Neill said it when Clough came in, people were starstruck because he was a celebrity. You know, he was making Saturday night television appearances, um, which is not something you see now. But it is it, it was a celebrity status for a manager. Yeah. And I suppose it was just it was it really backs up everything you hear about him, you know? Yeah, for sure. You know, and I think what rang out throughout the documentary and like obviously throughout his career, he was so laid back. You know, mm -hmm. like any time he was interviewed, he never panicked. He, you know, he never, he was always kind of clever and witty with interview. And, you know, mm -hmm. there was, um, there was one time there, you know, in the, in the cup final when they walked out and uh, he was leading the team out and he stopped to wave to the fans and he was waving to the fans with a completely serious look on his face. You know, he was, yeah. even though he was kind of joking and being humorous, he was letting on that he was serious. You know, he, it was mm -hmm. always very relaxed that way. And, you know, 
is well coming on to Peter Taylor. There was um, another time. It was was it against Liverpool in the Champions League when there was a penalty given to Nottingham Forest? I think so. Yeah. Or was and it? They, a cup, it was a Liverpool yeah. match, and it might have been a cup final, but it was it was an yeah. important match. It could have been, and I'm trying to see who was the. There was a penalty uh, given to Forest, and I remember they asked one of the players afterwards uh, if he thought it was a penalty, and uh, Peter Taylor said it was a penalty, and uh, your man said, if he says it's a penalty, it's a penalty. You know. There was just such yeah. unity in it. You know, they were all on the one sheet. You know, they looked up mm-hmm. to, to Taylor and to Clough and whatever they said was, it, it was gospel. Like, you know, they didn't argue mm-hmm. with them. They didn't fight with them. You know, he treated his players like family. And as well, yeah. they were saying if there was a wedding, if there was a christening or anything, they went out as a team. You know, everything was done as a team and it, it cemented their kind of chemistry and it showed on the field, you know, which kind of football they were playing. It was just so consistent, you know. Yeah, and like Brian Clough, um, He's painted out, and rightfully so, as a hugely successful football manager, but he has his own yeah. demons and struggles. Um, and it, that's one thing the documentary mightn't touch on, and it doesn't touch on in the other film. If you're interested for more uh, Brian Clough content, is The Damned United, a yeah. film we've actually both watched together as well at, at another time, about this time at Derby County in Leeds. But um, yeah, like you said, overall, the camaraderie, and it, it was so different to modern game. You know, I was trying to think of managers he was like, and I suppose Klopp is the closest, merely in kind of that friendship aspect. But yeah. there was also the aspect that I think Jose Mourinho built up years ago of it's us against them, even against the media, against Liverpool, against everyone yeah. was this whole like everyone's against us. We have to prove them wrong. And it really inspired the players. Um, like you said, it, it, it was incredible. And the, the one thing that really struggled as well was the, the training that they did wasn't even training. You know, yeah. they were I think I think was it O'Neill or one of them basically said if you had it nowadays, it wasn't training. You know, it was essentially, I think he said five asides and running around and going for walks around the city centre and meeting fans. and that, yeah. um, I can't remember which player it was now, but one of the players, maybe it was Larry Lloyd, went and was coming back to fitness and um, wanted to just get his, I suppose, his uh, his cardio better. So he went for a run on his day off and Clough called him into the office and said, if you ever do that again, don't take a rest day. I, will, uh, I won't play you. I'll sell you. You know what I mean? It was really strange and something you don't see um, nowadays. But like, like you said, it's, it's hugely in- inspiring. But I suppose to go into the nuts and bolts of the the season, they'd won the league the year before. They were um, not a, not a very fashionable team. That this is during the period where Liverpool would have been hugely dominant, um, and Liverpool were European Cup champions. Nottingham Forest won the league, so there was two English teams in the Champions League. And the first round uh, of the European Cup, they were drawn against Liverpool, which would have been hugely. Um, I was saying to you beforehand, Jack, some of the teams that were in that draw. I'm not sure yeah. of the structure of the draw, but I think it's fairly open. There was teams like Valletta from Malta. Um, there was Icelandic teams, like not going to even try and pronounce it. There was an Albanian. This was back when the Champions League or the European Cup was the champions of each league and the yeah. European champions entered into a total free-for-all. You know, there's Zaborzhovka, Bruno, you know, these teams that are just, you know, not not um, fancied at all. There was t- 13 nil wins and 12 nil wins. So it was a really unlucky draw for them in a way. But I think Clough said... Yeah. We're going to have to beat them at some stage. We might as well beat them in the first round. And do you want to maybe take us through what happened? Yeah, that's true. You know, it was, uh, as they were saying at the start, you know, when you're drawn in Europe, you think you'll be jetting off to Spain or to Portugal mm. or something. And the first draw they got was in England as well. You know, it was kind of anticlimactic from their perspective. Mm-hmm. But obviously it was the biggest draw they could have got. You know, Liverpool mm-hmm. were the biggest team at the time. And, you know, as Clough said, they're going to have to beat them at some stage. So, you know, they went down and they played Liverpool and they were always confident, you know, even even though obviously they had beaten them before, hadn't they? They had beaten them in the cup, yeah. And they were, you know, they were sure they could beat them again. And uh, like that was an incredible win, you know. And after that game, Bob Paisley even said, "There's no reason why Nottingham couldn't go on and win it," you know. Mm-hmm. The it, the display they put on, and there was no reason why they couldn't push on. And they, they feared nobody as well was the key thing, you know. And obviously mm-hmm. there was that admiration. Whatever Clough wanted to do, they were willing to do if it was keep, you know. I know Martin O'Neill mentions later on that he was always told to make runs into the box, you know, run after run mm-hmm. after run. And obviously, eventually, he did get that goal. I think it was against was against Grasshopper. But anyway, he got his goal. And, you know, it just showed they looked up to him, you know. That Liverpool game was like, you know, it was, I suppose, it set them on their way. Like, that was the belief they needed. And the best place yeah. to meet them was in the first round because it prepared mm-hmm. them, you know. That gave them everything they needed to push on. And, you know, I just think that, you know, the, the team he built, you know, mm-hmm. they were they were the force to be reckoned with. And 
despite that, <laughs> Clough took no notice. He just went in prepared the same way. He knew all he needed was a draw. You know, he didn't need to go out attacking football, but he stuck to his guns and, you know, he kept his tactics the same, regardless of who Liverpool had beaten or by how much. And mm -hmm. what did you think of that game, you know? How did you view it as a... I, I think it was, like, you know, there was, um, I suppose, back then when there was less um, English teams in Europe, uh, like I said, not in Forest were champions, Liverpool were European champions, so there was two English sides. I suppose it would have been a lot more rare for two English sides to come up against each other. So I, I can imagine, I can only imagine the hype that was being built up around it, you know. Um, and you can see it in the documentary, the bits of media Clough's doing beforehand, like you said. And it was a huge 2-0 win. They took a 1-0 lead and they got the second goal later on. And the hype, like you said, being built up, Spurs had beaten, been beaten 7-0 by Liverpool. Clough was asked about it, you know, does this put, kind of put yeah. any fear into you? And he just said, absolutely not. You know, and it, like you said, it really set them on their way. Um, a fantastic yeah. start for, for um, a really strong Nottingham Forest team um, built from, you know, I, I go into it later on about built from the back, but if you go through their European matches, we'll do a quick run through here, like they, they beat Liverpool 2-0, yeah. they scored 7 in the next round, 5, then 4, you know, they were such a strong attacking team as well, and yeah. I suppose part of that was when they signed the first £1 million player um, which sounds like nothing nowadays but Trevor Francis was a huge, and yeah. he ended up scoring the winner for them in the European Cup final but like, the teams that they face nowadays you mightn't think that they were uh, as big as said, you know, AK Athens, they beat them in the, in the round of 16. Grasshoppers yeah. of Zurich, they beat in the quarterfinal. But this was a grasshopper side that had knocked out Real Madrid, the Spanish champions, in the previous round. It's really nothing to be, uh, to be, uh, to be, you know, to be sniffed at. They were a fantastic team, and um, like you said, it really shines true. That they, they were confident. That was the thing that really not uh, shown true for me in the Liverpool game was how confident they were of beating yeah. the European champions. And how confident they were beating AK Athens, and how confident they were, and it, they beat them seven two Athens, five two against Grasshopper, and the yeah. only real rick they had in Europe was the Col the Cologne game or Cologne, where they went two nil down at home in the first few minutes. They brought it back yeah. to three two to them, and then conceded a late one for a three all draw. And there was away goals back in this time as well, so they've conceded three away goals. They basically need to go and beat the German champions away from home, which is a huge. Um, a huge thing to have to do, and they did it. They went and yeah. beat them 1-0, uh, a goal in a 66 minute. Um, so, you, you know, you can imagine how nervous they would have been, but it shows how, how strong a team they were. And then they faced Malmo in the yeah. final. Um, a fantastic, fantastic campaign for them. It was, you know, and like you say, it wasn't smooth run to the final by any means, you know, even mm -hmm. in Athens, like it, it was their first venture. It was the second round, but it was their first venture into Europe, if you like. It was into a new culture, a new country they were experiencing something they had never seen before. And they did say that that was intimidating, you know, like even when they were staying in the chalets, uh, like there was complete power cut, you know, even mm -hmm. simple things like that just to throw them off. And obviously they came through that. And when Trevor Francis signed, he was, uh, he wasn't started. You know, Clough told him that he wouldn't be, mm -hmm. he wouldn't be playing him for a while. And you can understand how in the final, when he did start, you know, and Martin O'Neill and, and Archie Gemmell were left out. I know they were injured, but you can understand how they would feel hard done by. And I yeah. think coming back to Martin O'Neill, it's a testament to his uh, his commitment and his, you know, his character that he stayed for another season. You know, if he had left or he could have told uh, Brian Clough where to go, you know, after mm -hmm. being left out of such a, a magnificent game like and spectacle. And he stayed for the next season. And I think that shows, you know, and as I said against uh, Grasshopper, he got his goal. He got his goal that he was told to keep making runs into the box and it paid off. He got there in the end. And, uh, you know, obviously, them Cologne games, they were they were serious games. Like, it was yeah. Boyer, John Robbins, Robertson, and uh, Gary Burkle scored the goals. But, mm -hmm. you know, when they went 3-2 up there, like, that should have been it, you know. Obviously, yeah. as they say, when they were 2-0 down, they'd rather come out with a 3-all three, three draw than the 2-0 loss. So, you know, they were kind of on a high going into the second game. And mm -hmm. as well, what, uh, probably one of my favourite moments in the documentary was that uh, they said Peter Taylor had been to watch them and he said there's nothing to fear about them, that, oh, they yeah. were, that they were kind of a slow team, they weren't a great footballing team. And when they played them, they were probably the fastest team they had ever come up against and it was a shock mm -hmm. to them. But it just shows Peter Taylor, he was preparing them, you know, he was kind of sheltering them. He didn't want mm -hmm. them to be fearing opposition. And I think that's, you know, that just makes it all more enjoyable, you know. And it was... 100%. It was very inspirational to see that, you know, he knew his team were capable 
you know, he didn't have to tell them what to do or tell them to be afraid of opposition. Mm. And I think that's, you know, Peter Taylor played a huge role in it as well. You know, obviously Brian was the leader in it. But when you see Peter Taylor, it was these little things, you know, make him stand out for you, you know? And like, what do you think of him as a, as a leader? I think he was as, in, I think, as yeah, influential, I think, you know? I, I mean, you can talk about managers nowadays with their arms around players, but there is bits where you literally see yeah. Taylor with his arm around, you know, I think after the cup final, when you mentioned earlier where they were given a yeah. dubious penalty, I think it was that it was outside the box, I think. And, they were, it was, yeah. and, and Taylor literally gets his arm around him and says, no, 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 you know, and, you know, yeah. all, all that matters is we've our hand on the cup now, you know, and they, they, there was that kind of real, Brian Clough had the, ran the risk, I think, at times of maybe going a bit mental, you know, and um, yeah. Taylor would really seem like the steady hand. I think um, they'd had a falling out after Derby, uh, which meant Taylor didn't come to Leeds with, um, with Clough. Taylor went and tried to do his own managerial career, which wasn't all that yeah. successful. And they went and had another falling out afterwards while at Forest. So um, I think that kind of signaled the start of the, the downfall of Clough, um, which the documentary, obviously, it, it's very much a positive documentary, which is good. But, um, you know, it, they, they never really made up until, you know, and Taylor passed away. And, they you know, so it, it's kind of a sad note for the, the, the story to end on. But they had so many good times as well together, you know. Um, it was a fantastic, fantastic team. And to win the European Cup, uh, two years in a row they went on the next year and beat Kevin Keegan's Hamburg who were from what yeah. I can remember I've watched a few documentaries about them as well and they were like the I suppose the PSGs of nowadays you know they were hugely moneyed there was massive money in the German game because of the sheer support and Kevin Keegan I think was a world record signing for them at the time and the best player in the world probably um, yeah. so yeah it was fantastic I mean one thing of note that I only noticed we noticed beforehand Jack was that um, yeah. Bohemians were in the were the Irish representatives they were the Irish champions and they played uh, Ammonia from Cyprus and actually beat them going into the last 16 of Europe uh, for be being beaten 6-0 by Dynamo Dresden. So it was an interesting little one. And they played their home games at Flower Lodge, which I think is now Parky Ring in Cork. So it's a little little interesting tidbit for, for our football fans there. But I think we could talk all day for sure about like you know the little clips and the little bits in it, but yeah. we won't do it justice. Like You have to... Players like, um, like O'Neill, like Viv Anderson... Um, yeah. Archie Gemmel, Kenny Burns, these are the lads that really shine through in the documentary. Larry Lloyd, there's certain players that are in it more. Um, and yeah. I think I think probably Kenny Burns is probably my favourite. Or Kenneth, he said that the only people who call him Kenneth were <laughs> Brian Clough and his mother. <laughs> Kenneth, you know, um, it really yeah. showed the personalities. And I think O'Neill has a degree of confidence that you might ne necessarily see. On yeah. it, You have to kind of know him more I, I didn't really see it in him until he was Ireland manager you might have known a little bit more because he was Celtic coach but yeah maybe maybe from looking in as a fella a small guy with glasses you know he might think this fella's gonna be quiet a little but he's really confident and I don't want to say arrogant but you know he's got that um that dedication to him and I think that's something that's Clough yeah. instilled in him you know and that camaraderie yeah. that Clough brought to teams O'Neill really did bring to the Irish team as well and I, I think you could say the same about you know John Robertson a lot the yeah. players were saying at the time his attitude was poor his head wasn't in the game he was struggling a lot you know and when mm -hmm. Clough came in he he straightened him out he he knew what was wrong with him he knew how he could turn him into the great player that he was and mm -hmm. you can see like he scored crucial goals in the Champions League he was key to their midfield and like you say Clough's influence on all them players was incredible you know mm -hmm. they all went they all almost changed completely you know like mm -hmm. Kenny Burns was a fantastic player and you see him he had that aggression. He had that mm -hmm. fire. You know, he wasn't afraid, and it was that that same spirit that Clough had. You know, he had that mm -hmm. fighting team, and they weren't afraid to back down. And as as with O'Neill, you know, he always seems like a quiet fella. You know, but he's he knows his stuff, and he's he does have that fire and that grit when he has to have it. You know, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, it was uh, it was fantastic. I think Kenny Burns was the player he signed as a striker, and they were worried. Yes. The strikers mentioned that they were worried where you know I think John O'Hare was one of the manager sure leader was worried yeah. where would I play now you know what am I going to do um and Kenny Burns was put in center half then and they were they were delighted but uh going back to Trevor Francis which we said was one of the things I, th I saw most about Trevor Francis was they did a quick interview or there was a quick interview with him before he joined Forrest and the media were really trying to press him to oh do you want to join and he says I haven't had a transfer request you know I'd love to play for Brian Clay. he was trying to be as kind of I suppose polite to Birmingham as he could be yeah who we played for at the time but then once it shows the press conference after he signed and he's got Taylor one side and he's got Clough the other side. And he gets asked a bit of a tough question and he's kind of umming and ahhing. And um, yeah. Clough puts his arm around him again, like physically puts his arm around him and answers the question yeah. for him and says he's going to score his goals or whatever it is. 
And I think it really shows that kind of, um, I don't want to say father figure, because that can be a bit kind of, you know, stereotypical and a bit, but he, he was a real, um, in, he, he really kind of protected his players and brought the best yeah. out of him. O'Neill speaks gloriously about him, Roy Keane, like we said. I don't think there's a single, well, I won't say a single player, but because everyone has their enemies, but anyone who's shown under Clough has so much to say about him. And it's something that, again, if people might necessarily want to commit to a full documentary, um, Keane mentions it in the Keane Vieira documentary, which I'm sure a lot of people watching this have seen. And there's actually a great clip of Martin O'Neill on, I, on ITV, and he said on IFF TV, on ITV um, during a World Cup. He's sitting beside Fabio Cannavaro and Patrick Vieira. <laughs> and someone yeah. says something to Martin O'Neill, um, and O'Neill says, oh, it's Adrian Childs. Adrian Childs goes, oh, Martin, you're sitting yeah. beside two World Cup winners. And O'Neill kind of sits up in his seat, you know, ready to go for him. And he goes, Fabio, Patrick, I'm beside you here now. And like, obviously you bought one World Cups, but a lot of people forget. I have two European Cup medals, you know, two Champions League medals. How many do you have? How many do you have? You know, really kind of sticking the boot into them by way of sticking it into Adrian Childs. Because um, Adrian Childs, yeah. I think he's suggesting Matt O'Neill was a bit of a coward or something in terms of um, he asks him would he duck out of a wall and O'Neill is not happy at all. So you can see that kind of um, that kind of bite and that venom in him. You know, Clough was the same. Clough would be there for the good times. But when things got tough, you know, Clough was bang. You know, I, he was sitting up and he was, you know, he was ready to be, he had a tongue like a knife. You know what I mean? Ready to, to, to really kill people uh, if they yeah. dismissed him or his players. And I, I think that's the biggest takeaway. And like I said, we could talk all day about the little anecdotes players bring, but yeah. I couldn't encourage people enough to watch it because it's like a, the cult of Brian Clough is what really shines yeah. through, you know? Yeah, you, you really get taken into it, don't you? You know, when you're mm. watching, you get really engrossed in it, you know? And to see how the players, like, they strive to, to make Brian happy. And, you know, was it Kenny was saying that, you know, they used to give him the, the sign from, oh, from yeah. the sideline and they knew they were doing well then, you mm. know? They, like they just knew they, like it was almost like a personal goal to kind of get that recognition yeah. from Brian and they knew they were doing well then mm-hmm. and everyone like it was almost like a competition among themselves to get Brian's recognition and that's what mm-hmm. kind of drove them on to the next level isn't it and it it, yeah. it is sad how it worked out with uh with Peter Taylor at the end but obviously the documentary doesn't go into it we can only say mm-hmm. what uh what happened but it's it's it is really like you would feel good after watching it you know you really mm-hmm. do feel like uh you form a connection with the players and you know they're like they get really into it as well. Like they documented very well what happens. Like you say, their little anecdotes and stuff like that. It all adds to the experience of it, and I can't recommend it highly enough. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I would be a Nottingham Forest fan, obviously, you know. But just to see it, you know, I, I've, I have developed kind of a, a like for the club after that. I must mm-hmm. say, no. Yeah, I think one of the best things that shines through as well as a little bit aside from the football is the style, the the retro kits and the tracksuit yeah. tops that I, not just Forest, but that every team has yeah. is oh, it's I, I was straight on to Google trying to find something. It, it's a real kind of peak of football. You know, there's no sponsors plastered over everything. It's a yeah. real kind of classy um, time. And I I suppose just the last thing I suppose to to leave it on is the fact that it shouldn't be kind of um, dismissed that they actually went on and won the European Cup the next year. You know, it was two years yeah. in a row they went on and won it. And that's an unbelievable achievement for a club like Forest, you know, and yeah. it was the same. It wasn't like nowadays where, you know, you win the European Cup, let's say like Liverpool got the Champions League final and they went out and signed, you know, um, Alisson or whoever, you know. Yeah. Far, it, it was, he still had players who played for him in the first, in the second division, I suppose, in the championship that he brought up and won the European Cup with those yeah. players. And the, 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 the players, he didn't just develop them as footballers, uh, as people as well, you know. Yeah, Martin O'Neill, like yeah. I said, we can only speculate to an extent, but it seems like he really brought players out of their shells and made them into personalities. You know, guys like Viv Anderson, Larry yeah. Lloyd, Martin, Hill, Martin O'Neill, they all spoke so highly of him, all came out and all were huge, huge um, beyond Forest. You know, O'Neill was a hugely successful manager. Shilton was probably the best goalkeeper, definitely in yeah. England, probably in the world, or oh, certainly in the conversation at the time. And um, yeah, there, there, there isn't enough praise you can have for, for the job Clough did and for this documentary, really. Yeah, you know, if, one thing with the, the second the Champions League win or the European Cup, they didn't show much of that. I was expecting mm-hmm. to see a bit more of that. Obviously, the first one was uh, of higher magnitude, you know, to win the first one was such a big achievement. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it doesn't take from the documentary in any way. This might have been nice mm-hmm. to see a bit more of the second run, you know. But in fairness, yeah. it was it was very engrossing and it was enjoyable. You know, I ca- I couldn't say anything bad about it. Yeah, just to, I suppose for anyone who's interested, that they had a little bit of an easier first round in the second European Cup run. They had a Swedish side 
then they play the Romanian side. But then, you know, they ended up having to beat the, I think it's the East German champions and then Ajax yeah. in the semi-final. And like we said earlier, Kevin Keegan uh, led Hamburg side, who was probably the best player in the world at the time, Kevin Keegan. Um, so it, it's, like I said, it's it's an unbelievable achievement from them and can't recommend it highly enough if you want to see kind of the influence. I suppose people nowadays, yeah. especially our generation, Jack, we hear about Brian Clough being a fantastic manager yeah. and um, we wouldn't have seen it. You know, football didn't exist before the Premier League for a lot of people. So if anyone's yeah. uh, if anyone's interested in seeing, you know, probably the only man to compete with Sir Alex Ferguson for the title of best English best manager in England ever. Um, yeah. You can see why Clough didn't achieve as much over a long period of time as Ferguson, but he took two clubs in Derby and Nottingham Forest from nothing to not with Derby it was English champions and with Forest it was European champions, and it, it really shows what a fantastic play, uh, fantastic coach he was um, for so many players. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, obviously, like you say, he he mightn't have achieved the same amount as a uh, Sir Alex or many others but it was, it was what he did with the team you know it was what he turned them into you know like you say there were still players from uh, from league two and they'd come up and they were still with him when they won the champions league and that just shows again like you know i'm only disappointed that i didn't get to you know experience brian clough's you know mm-hmm. that i didn't get to see him in his prime when he was managing these teams it's it's disappointing but it's great to have documentaries like this that still show his legacy you know and mm-hmm. it's it's absolutely worth the watch i'm sure you can see it on sky documentaries now I saw it there uh, the other day, and you can get it online in several places, and I you know, couldn't recommend it highly enough. Absolutely. So um, I suppose that's that's the, uh, it from us today, Jack. Um, yeah. This is a bit of a new series we're trying out. Obviously, with football coming back, there'll be a lot more football-focused uh, content on the channel. But if people are interested yeah. in seeing another episode of the series, please do leave a like or leave a comment with a few recommendations. Um, do, yeah. We'll be delighted. It doesn't even have to be documentaries. I think me and Jack were discussing the film Goal, which was uh, something I was hugely... A fan of as a child so um yeah anything at all if, you, if you're if you enjoyed it leave a like leave a comment yeah, and let for us sure, know yeah. your favorite documentary and if you check it out please do let us know what you thought of it um i was i couldn't have uh, i couldn't recommend it enough to anyone so thanks a million again yeah. everyone thanks very much bye bye